so the pink kangaroo from 2023 let's just go into it then kangaroo day is today uh, what day it will be in 2023 eight days time well just divide this by seven to find the remainder except there isn't a remainder you just get a bust about it to find it's completely in it and so it's exactly 289 weeks away to the day so it will also be a thursday uh, this one you can actually just lawyer um, people who watch a lot of my channel will know what i mean you're not told exactly where this square is within the larger square so I just shoved it to the corner and said the area must remain the same because if it's not then I can't answer the question so I just put this little box in the corner here uh, I'm looking for this area down here it's just going to be well this length is 6 right so it's going to be 10 plus 4 divided by 2 times 6 so the total area is 100 um, what I just said is 42 so therefore it's 42% question number 3 so you, you draw the first bit I guess so it's four and uh, sorry, it's 1 and then 4 horizontal and then one if you want to add another plank uh, you need four more horizontal and then of course another vertical but this means that you're always adding them in in fives and you always start one more than a multiple of five and so wherever you finish it's always one more than a multiple of five and the only one here that does that is 96. Uh, here I've had a bit of a discussion because I'm not 100% sure of the answer to this but okay so she's running to catch the train and then walking at the end so the first bump has to be bigger than the last so we can eliminate these two she's also going on a train in the middle of that so that's going to be the highest peaks so these three look okay this one we can eliminate because the train stops right the train stops so she should be going at speed zero for a bit now the question is how many times does it stop and i think we decided that two stops later means that you stop once somewhere you don't want to go and then you get off at the next stop, uh, which is what this one represents. Not 100% about that. I don't know whether two stops later means this one here that stops twice and then you get off on the one, but I, I think it's probably E. 49% of 200 is 98, and then you want to have a 50% win rate. So currently at 98 out of 200, if you win one more, you get to this. Then if you win again, you get to this. Win again, you get to this. Win again, you get to this. That's four wins to get to a 50% win rate. So the answer is E. Question six, trying to save water. Let's just pretend she uses 16 litres to shower. I have no idea whether that's a, a, an actual amount that you might use, absolutely no idea. But anyway, if you um, shorten that by a quarter, you now use 12 litres. And if you shorten that by a quarter, um, you now use nine litres. And so you're currently using nine out of 16 that you used to, so you've saved seven out of 16. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you've saved that much. Good, question number seven. So we have triangles here. This length is obviously eight. We need to realize that this triangle here is similar to this one here and similar to this one here. The distance across all the way here is eight plus five plus three, which is 16. So these triangles are all in a ratio of two to one for their bottom sides to the tops. So this triangle here uh, is three across. So this length is 1.5. This triangle is eight across. So this length is four. This is your trapezium. For the second time in this paper, we can work out the area of trapezium is this plus this divided by two times that, uh, which, I mean, you can do some maths, I guess. I mean, that's kind of what this paper is about, but uh, you get this answer here. Question number eight, you have a wire cut into three pieces. We can call it X, 1.5X, uh, that's the decimal for 50 cent bigger, isn't it? And then 1.5 times 1.5X, which is 2.25. This plus this plus this must be 95. You can put that together. At this point, I realized working in fractions was actually much better times everything by 4, divided by 19 gives you x is 20, so we get 20, then 50% more is 30, and then 50% of that is 15, so I only get 45, and the answer is 45. Question number 9, family of 5 from 80, two of them are 6 and 8, so we have 6 plus 8, plus A, B, and C, if those are the other ages, are 80. Seven years ago, this person wasn't born, so we'll just get to remove it, this person was 1, and these ages were A minus 7, B minus 7, and C minus 7. So this is what we're looking for. Of course, from here, well, I mean, we can simplify this, just minus 21 and then add 1 to make minus 20. A, B, and C from over here, well, that's 14. Take it away from there, you get 66. And then you can put 66 into there and you get 40, 46, sorry, 66 minus 20 is 46. For the answer, question number 10, our second lawyering question of the day. Um, you can imagine that, like, we don't know exactly where these two points are if you sort of pin them here um, and move them left and right. You don't know exactly where they are, which means that the area must stay the same regardless of where they are, otherwise the question would be unanswerable. So let's just take this point here and move it all the way to the end. And then let's take this point here and also move it all the way to the end. And if you do that, you end up with this picture, which must have the same answer. You can then split it like this and this and notice that you've got two out of the eight uh, identical triangles, which is a quarter. 
Question number 11, so uh, you know that this uh, triangle here, this equilateral one, has the same perimeter as these three. Let's just say that this equilateral triangle has length 4, 4, and 4. Of course, that makes this length 2. And now the triangle has perimeter 12, right? 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. So 12 minus 2 is 10, divided by 2 makes these two lengths 5. Uh, and likewise for these two, this one is also 2 because it's the same as this one over here. And so the uh, perimeter of the pentagon all the way around is 5 plus 2 plus 5 plus 4 plus 4, which is 20. And the triangle, of course, is 12, as I already said. Simplify that to 4 thirds. And you have your answer. Question number 12, we have blocks being placed. So you take them in batches of 3 and put them down here. Then the next batch of 3, put it there. Uh, now the top one of those batch of 3 will be 90, then 87, then 84, and so on. These are all multiples of 3. So therefore, 42 and 39 will be sort of the top block that you move over. So if we move over 39, it will be moved over with the 37 and the 38 below it. Of course, above that, the next ones you'd put up would be the next three here. So the next three here would be, um, after 37, would be 36, 35, 34, which you put in that order on top. And then underneath, you'd have the previous three, which would be 42, 41, 40, and that would be on top there. And then the distance between 39 and 40 is 1, 2, 3, 4 blocks in between the, the two of them. Number five, so uh, sorry, number 13, a number is powerless if you can't write it as a power greater than one. Otherwise, every number would be powerless, right? If you if you could use one, then you could just use five as five to the one. So you're not allowed to do that, but you can use everything else. Uh, now, eight is two cubed and nine is three squared. So this largest number you can use must be 77. And one is like one to the power five. So you can't use any ones, which means the smallest two digit, these are all two digit, by the way. The smallest two-digit number you must be able to use is 22. They have a common divisor of 11, I believe. Uh, tw uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, 14, so we're looking for this gray area. Obviously, it's five squares plus two smaller circles minus the largest circle is going to be the gray area. Now, this length is 30 divided by three for length 10s here. 10 times 10 is 100, so this is going to be five squares of, a, of 100 each, which makes 500. Now these circles have radius 5, 4, and 3. And now when you use the uh, the, the, the formula of pi r squared, you might notice that 3 squared plus 4 squared is 16. Sorry, 3 squared plus 4 squared is 9 plus 16, which is 25. Minus 25 makes that all go away. And you end up nicely with 500 centimeters squared. 15, so I literally just added up the first five prime numbers and got 28. Now, to average 6, you would need them to sum to 30, because 30 divided by 5 is 6. And you can make these add up to 30 by just changing this 11 to a 13. So the answer is possibly 6. Uh, 16. So we've got radius 1 here, so we can say this distance is 1, this distance is 1. Two radiuses meet in a straight line when the circle is touched like this. That's just a thing you're allowed to know, um, or we probably should know. These, these radiuses are 1 here as well and 1 over there. Uh, we can now make a little triangle here, which has, of course, height 1, because that's just the radius of this as well. And then we can say 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 squared minus 1 squared is root is, is 3. Square rooted is root 3, so that's just some Pythagoras to get root 3 there. But this length is also 1, and this length is also 1, uh, pretty, pretty clearly. And so now looking at this big triangle here, um, we have ps squared equals 1 squared plus 1 plus 1 plus root 3, all squared. And you do the maths, and for for a second you think that you might have to square this, but it's asking you for the square of the distance. So that's just this squared, which is this, which is this here. And we're good to go. 17. So I think I understand this question, but I'm not 100% sure that I do. Uh, your next digit needs to be the smallest positive integer, or non-negative integer, sorry, so you'll have to use zero, that's not contained in the, first, in the, in the four before it. So clearly we don't have a one here, so the next needs to be a one. Now, we're only looking at the four before. Now, so we're looking at these four. Now, that's one, two, three, and zero. So the next must be a four. That's the smallest one we, we, we can use. Now, we're only focusing on these, and there's no zero here, so we can use a zero next. And then on these, there's no two here, so we can use a two next. Then on these, there's no, um, what is there? Sorry, on these, sorry, here. What is there? There's no three here, so we can use a three next. Then on these, there's no one, so we use a one. Then on these, there's no four. Then on these, there's no zero, and so on. And you end up repeating the pattern. And you end up saying, let's ignore these first four. After that, it just goes 1, 4, 0, 2, 3, 1, 4, 0, 2, 3, 1, 4, 0, 3, uh, 2, 3. So it's got this sort of batch of five. 
always appearing in this row from the first four. So let's take off four from our search and pretend we're starting here and look for the 2019th uh, term. Now these are in batches of five, so the 2019th term will be uh, the fourth one that comes along because the 2015th will be ending a batch of five. So we're looking for the fourth term that comes along and that will be a two there. And I think that will be the answer. Uh, this question, I just pretended there were 10 students, and uh, and I said that, okay, that means nine of them answered the first question correctly, eight to the second, and seven the third. I set it up in the most basic way here, where I said there was one numpty who got nothing right, one person who only got the first right, and then one person who got two right, and then everything else, everybody else got everything right. Uh, so this is 70% of the students, sorry, this is 60%, isn't it, of the students, yeah, 60% getting everything correct. But I can move this around a little bit, so I can say, instead of person number four getting question three right, let's just make person number one get that question right instead. And now we're down to 50%. Um, sorry, it was 70%, wasn't it? Because there were all but three of them, so it was 70% before. Now we're down to 60%. Except I could also just swap this yes with this no. And I haven't created anyone, haven't created any more people who got all three questions right. But I'm down to 50% uh, getting all three correct. But I could also finally replace uh, this one over here with this one up here, because this person's still got one spare no, so I can swap those over. And now I'm down to 40% with yeses, and I think I have two per two questions there, two questions there, two questions there, two there, two there, and two there. So there's nowhere left for me to shift these yeses without creating more people who have answered all three correct, so I think I'm down to 40% and that'll be my answer. And number 19 then, so let's just draw this, I mean if your first instinct isn't just to draw this. Um, I don't really know what to tell you. But you've got a rectangle at those four points there. You've got a centre of a circle three quarters of the way along and a little bit above halfway. Radius 10. Now the circle ends up not mattering at all really because you've got to draw a line that goes through this point that cuts the remaining area of the rectangle in half. Now the thing is, any line through this point is going to cut the circle in half. So the circle is kind of irrelevant. Half of it is going to be taken off the top area and half of the wall. It's, it's irrelevant. So I think all I decided that you needed to do here was put another point down here such that this entire thing is symmetrical. So instead of being three quarters of the way across and, you know, 60% of the way up, we're just going to make it a quarter of the way across and 40% uh, of the way up. So I think if I just put the point there, I think this is now perfectly symmetrical with this point because it's, te it's sort of five below uh, the average point in the height and it's a quarter of the way across and three quarters. So I think this makes it nice and symmetrical and therefore makes these areas equal, I believe. And of course the uh, gradient of this is just, well the rise is 10 and the run is 50. So the gradient is, one, is 10 over 50, which is just going to be a fifth. Good, question number 20. Uh, so we have a three-digit number. Now a three-digit number called ABC, say, that's 100 lots of A plus 10 lots of B plus C. That's how place value works. That's what we spent most of our first years in primary school trying to learn. We take away the digits, which is just A, B, and C, and that gives us this. And apparently when we do that, we end up with a three-digit number whose all three digits are the same, like 111 or 222 or 333. Thing is though, this is a multiple of nine, and multiples of nine have to follow a rule whereby the digit sum itself is a multiple of nine, and the only three-digit or repeating three-digit three-digit numbers that do that are 333, 666, and 999, nothing else actually does that. Nothing else, none of the others are multiples of nine. So either this thing here equals that, or this thing here equals that, or this thing here equals that. Now if it equals this, divide three through three by nine and you get this. And now the only options for A and B are A being three and B being four. Um, of course you can also set this thing equals this, divide this by nine, you get that. Set it to this, divide by nine, you get that. But stick it on this for a second. A is 3, B is 4. Now notice the C's cancel when you do this sum that she's originally doing. So C can be anything. So there are actually 10 options for this one. There's the number 3, 4, and then whatever you want. So there are 10 options there for numbers that will work. Here A is 6, B is 8 I think will work. And again there will be 10 options for that because C doesn't matter. Here you actually can't make A and B single digit numbers, which they of course have to be to make this number make sense. Uh, so there are no solutions there, and I think there are 20 in total that will make this work. 21, uh, I can't really s give you much insight into this question at all, as if I'm being given much insight on the rest of it and not just been doing everything in the laziest possible way. Except that 
when you're doing these number puzzles like this, you want to think about numbers in terms of their primes, not in terms of their actual number. These, 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 are, this, these are the first numbers from 1 to 9 written in the proper way. And the reason I'm doing this is because when I put these in these circles, I'm just going to try and get a matching number of 2s and 3s in each row and column. And the reason I'm saying 2s and 3s is because, of course, 5 and 7 can't be part of this. Because the moment you put a 5 here, there are no other 5s to put anywhere, and so therefore the product is not going to match because one will be uh, a multiple of 5 and the other won't. So we can't use 5 and 7, which is great because that means we know exactly what other 7 numbers we're using. I, I sort of thought the 3 squared would have to go here to separate it from the 3 and the 3 times 2, because that way this row has, a, has two 3s, this one has two threes, this one has two threes, so that's all good. And then I just literally spent a minute just trying stuff until I found this configuration, which gives me three twos here, three twos here, three twos here, um, and, uh, and then the one just obviously just helps out and does its best. This uh, answer therefore is two, and yeah, I, I just literally just try stuff. This question, uh, if, if you're someone who can visualize this, then great, I can't. What you spot as you go through them, though, is when you try and package this up, and by the way, I thought it was easier to imagine packaging this into the screen. Like, if you imagine, it's hard to explain, but like folding this uh, upwards uh, rather than backwards, uh, that was easier for me to imagine. But anyway, when you, when you look at this and you try and fold it up, you realize that this rectangle here folds up to be side by side, this edge here with this edge here. And so this black line should when you fold this up, reappear here, which it does not, and therefore you can't make C. So just imagine folding this up forwards towards the screen into a box. That bit there should connect there, and it doesn't. So the answer is C. You just need to look through each one and try and spot places that don't work like that. So I just spotted C eventually. Now 23, I, I'm not happy about. I, If anyone has a nice way of doing this, I, I, I'd be really pleased. One thing that did has been pointed out that I thought might be quite cool is you start at B and then you just need to always alternate between N and A. So if you just remove B from the picture, essentially you're just asking how many random walks you can take starting here or here, and that will be the answer. Unfortunately, I didn't find a nice way of actually finding out that. So what I did do was I started at B and I started drawing a tree diagram, which in PowerPoint is not fun. Um, but anyway, you go from B to A, and now both of these A's have two ends they could go to. Um, so this is what the tree diagram looks like so far. Now, this is where it gets annoying because, you know, when you go from this B to this A to this N, you only have two A's you could go to. But if you go from here to here to here, you have four A's you can go to. So that's annoying. Um, so this N can either, this N here can only go to two of them, but this one can go to four different ones. Um, but it's even worse than that. And actually what I can do here is I, I stopped counting this tree because I realized that I can just double this branch because it's all symmetrical. So I stopped going from here, but I'm just going to double this branch at the end. Now, if you're going B, A, N, A, you've now got two ends you could go to. Uh, I've said three there. I don't know why. I presume because this A is representing this one. So B, N, A, B, A, N, A, and then you've got three to go to, or B, N, A, and then you've only got two to go to. I assume that's what that one means. Now here, even more confusing, you've gone B, N, sorry, B, A, N, and now you've got four A's you can go to. Two of them allow you to go to two other ends, uh, this one and this one, and two of them allow you to go to three other ends, which I think is what I'm going to write there. Two allow you to go to two, two allow you to go three. Now we've gone all the way to N here, so now we've got one more count to do. Of these three ends, which were, we went B, N, A there, so of these three ends, one allows you to go to four, and two allow you to go to two, which I think is what I'm going to write there. One allows you to go to four, two allows you to go to two. Of these two ends here, so this one was the one we want B and there. Of these two ends, one allows you to go to four, and one allows you to go to two. So that's one goes to four, one goes to two. Of these two, lots of two ends, I can't remember which system this was. This was B, A, N, you can go to four. Two of them allow you to go to two, and two of them allow you to go to three. Of those, two of them allow you to go to two. Uh, which is this one and this one, and this one, sorry, as well. So actually two of them allow you to go to two, and one allows you to go to four. Uh, you can't be all the way down here, I don't think, so that's, I didn't have that one, it's just two in this one. So, and there's two lots of those because there are two different ends you could be at in the first place. I know this is getting a complete mess, but whatever. Two of them allow you to go to three, so with this, these are uh, these two A's we're talking about now. 
Um, and of those ends that you're at, one allows you to go to four and two allow you to go to two. So that's going to be two lots of one and four and two and two. And now if we just count this all up, there's four final positions there. There's two lots of two, which is four final positions there. There's four plus two, which is six final positions. There's four plus two all multiplied by two, which is 12. And then there's four plus four, which is eight times two is 16. And remember, all of that is going to be multiplied by two because this is an entirely separate bunch, which I couldn't bother to write out, which is the same. So this makes eight plus six is 20. 32, 40, uh, 8, I guess. Have I counted that correctly? 8. Uh, can I even add? Uh, so we've got 8, and then plus 6, I believe, is 14. Plus 12 is 26. Plus 16 is 42. Doubled is 84, which I believe was the answer I had the first time. That was uh, that was uh, that was gross. I, I, I'm not even pretending like I explained that well. That was just a horrible question that I just hated. This question I think is quite cool. So these numbers represent how long the paths around them are. Now, of course, these are confusing because, like, this path is being counted twice by this number and by this number. What you could do is you could say, well, all of these paths, ignoring the outside edge, all of these paths in the middle. If I do 10 plus 3 plus 7, I think I get all of the paths inside the park. Now, the reason I haven't added the 4 is because this 10 gives me this curve, this 7 gives me this one, and this 3 gives me this one. So now I think I have all the paths inside. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away 4 from that, um, because that will take away this path, this path, and this path. And so 16 is the length of this, 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 uh, this down here this over here uh, and I think I said this before and that's cool because now if I add up all of the outside numbers which is 42 and then take away this number take away this 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 on around the outside then I think I get left with just the stuff outside here um, which I think is 26 and that would be my answer 25 then uh, I also had a bit of a problem with this question I, I found it quite hard I think I've got the right answer um, the key thing that I thought was, okay, to have three consecutive numbers next to each other add up to a multiple of three, just split the numbers between one and nine into three boxes, either multiples of three, one more than a multiple of three, or one less than a multiple of three. And then if you add up anything, so then this is what it looks like when you split up, these are the multiples of three, these are the ones that are one less, these are the ones that are one more. If you add up any three of these, you'll get a multiple of three, as long as you take one from each box. Right, because the the one below and the one above will cancel out and you'll just be left with the multiple three. So okay, what I decided was to do this then. Um, so this is potentially one option you could go with. You could take these first three, then these next three, then these next three. And also when you take, like for example, say you took this, this, and this, you would then have to go back to this row to take another one of the other two, then this, then this. Because remember, you can't just have the first three out of the multiple of three. You've got to have the next three after that as well. So like if you go multiple of three, one less, one more, this has to be a multiple of three as well to make these three contain one multiple of three, one less, and one more. So you have to sort of, whatever order you choose, you have to repeat it twice more. So that's got me thinking of ways to count this then. There are six ways to choose kind of your base order. You either go multiple of three, one less, one more, or one less, one more, multiple of three, or, and so on. There are six ways of doing that, and that's just, you can choose which one you take first, whether you take one of this column first, or one of this, one of this, three ways. Then you can choose one of the other two columns, and that's three times two, and then you've got the last column to go. So there are six ways of choosing the base order of which one you want to take first, then second, then third, and then you just repeat it from there. So, okay, so let's just pretend that I've chosen the order to be multiple of three, one less, then one more. Now we've got to think about how we actually select these numbers from here. And now there are three, you know, so let's say I'm, I'm going this column, then this column, then this, this column. There are three choices from here that I can take. Then there are three from here, then there are three from here. I can take any of them. So that's going to be three times three times three choices. And now when I'm taking from my next set, remember I still need to go here, then here, then here. There are only two numbers in each in each type left from each choose. So there are two options times two options times two options. And then there's only one number from each type left. I need to take them in the same order. So there's just one choice times one choice times one choice. And I think my final answer is going to be six 
times this, times this, times this. But of course, this 3 can pair up with this, this can pair up with this, this can pair up with this to make 6 times 6 times 6 times 6, and I think that will be my answer of A. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.